Of course we fit a custom hard tube loop inside this tiny case.
Thanks for watching guys, I hope you all enjoyed the build. It was quite a challenging one, but it made it very easy to build inside this case with the modularity of all of the custom panels that can be taken off, switched around. You can also take the supporting beams off uh, for easy reach inside the case, which I found very handy, especially when trying to fit a full custom wall cooling loop inside of this case. Now there are a couple of minor things that I really want to bring to your guys' attention. Uh, this case, for me, was absolutely perfect, except for one minor flaw. Now, anyone who does get this case is probably not going to put a custom loop in it, but it does have mounting options to be able to build a custom loop in it, just like we have done here. We've used the pump mounting options at the front to mount the pump, and a reservoir as well. Now with that being said, we can fit a radiator down the bottom only with fans on top of it. There's not enough clearance up the top. The problem with that is if we want to mount a GPU, we obviously cannot put it in these slots right here uh, because we've got the reservoir and the pump in the way. So we have to mount it horizontally like that. Now the issue with this is the water block is almost right up against the fans. There's about a five mil gap, so it's actually going to be choking those fans a tiny bit. Now we did test everything. Uh, the GPU ended up at 68 degrees, which isn't too bad. And you guys can see the flat line of 68 degrees where we did a Fermark stress test. And the CPU ended up at 83 degrees. Now this was in Cinebench, so that's worst case scenario. That pushes the CPU to the limit. If you're going to be playing games, the CPU isn't going to be maxed out, so you'll see the temperatures come right down. But this is a workable machine. It's just a shame that perhaps if the case was 5, 10 mil taller, there would have been that clearance between the fans and the GPU block to give it even better airflow. Now, one solution that I did think of, and it's great that Coolmaster has this option, they actually have a, a 3D print 
section on their website. So you can actually 3D print some case feet, make them taller, and mount the fans underneath so that they've still got enough room underneath to bring the cool air in. And there's enough room between the radiator and the GPU so that the fan can exhaust and not get choked. Now that was pretty much the only issue I had with this case. Apart from that, it's brilliant. Plenty of mounting options, lots of modularity. Uh, the cable management is such a breeze. You can bring the GPU cables right down the side. They're all hidden from plain sight. The 24 pin comes right up the side of the power supply shroud and that is held in place with a few cable ties that are mounted on the uh, power supply shroud. Now the rest of the cables, uh, there is enough room to tuck them behind the back. We've got a couple sitting behind the radiator as well. Uh, so that's nice and tucked away and then we'll put the back panel on once we're finished testing this system out. For the motherboard, we have the Z490 Aorus Ultra motherboard. This is an ITX motherboard. Looks really nice inside this system. It's paired with a 10700K uh, and it plays games really well. We actually did a few benchmarks. Uh, the GPU inside is the Aorus RTX 2080 Super with a water block on it, of course. Uh, I'll throw a couple of benchmarks on screen for you guys now. You can see that it performed really well. Uh, in Metro Exodus, we did a couple of runs of that. Then we also did some Time Spy Extreme where it scored really well. And we also did some Time Spy in Normal. Now we also have 16 gigs of the T-Force Extreme ARGB RAM. This looks really nice in this system and the RGB doesn't just stand out so much that it you know it gives you this weird unicorn vomit feel it's really nice and dimmed down i really like that about this ram and the whole heat spreader pretty much lights up with the lighting which looks really good and for the storage we have two seagate 520 fire cooter drives plenty of storage for all of our games and plenty of speed now i did have to mention the uh, power supply that we are using this is cool master's first 850 watt SFX power supply. Now that is 850 watts gold rated as well. So they're packing a lot more power in such a small form factor, which is really good to see. And last but not least, we have the case, the Coolmaster NR200P. What an absolute beast of an ITX case this is. I'd highly recommend it to anyone looking for a smaller compact system. Now, of course, if you guys were paying attention at the beginning of the video, it also has this front plate which you can mount a radiator to. It makes it nice and easy if you are using an all-in-one cooler. You can mount that you know, on the front there so that it doesn't get in the GPU's way. Uh, just so much easier. A case with many options is always a good case. Anyway, guys, that about does it for us. If you'd like to see more of the specs, I'll leave those in the description. Hope you all enjoyed the build. Please remember to leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see more ITX builds just like this, let us know down in the comments. As always, if you'd like to support us, it is greatly appreciated. We have a Patreon. That link will be in the description. Or you can become a YouTube channel member. It's greatly appreciated, guys. It helps us to do things like this. And it helps us to afford materials and everything such as the GPU backplate we were able to make for this system. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to join our Discord down below, and we'll see you all in the next one.